Hello everybody, I'm Max McAllister from Traction Dynamics. You guys are here, you know that. Uh, so uh, this video is more for, uh, for your benefit and for the benefit of other people around the world. We're going to send this around to anybody who's interested in learning more about their Honda GL1800 uh, suspension and potential uh, different types of upgrades and ways to maintain and repair it um, and upgrade it. So there's no script for this. We're just rolling cameras, nothing fancy. It's going to be just like we're talking. If anybody has a question, they're dying me to answer, I'll answer it while I'm talking. It's, this isn't uh, that formal of a thing. It's uh, just going to be, be a regular, straight up fun thing. Um, so it's basically two kinds of people, one that are unhappy with the suspension and one that says, I, I don't know what's wrong with it. I think it rides like Cadillac. It's really great. Um, so um, for the person who actually thinks their gold wing handles great at the moment, um, there's uh, an old adage, uh, 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 Paul Thede of Race Tech says, uh, the best you've ridden is the best you know. And uh, so some people have nothing else to compare it to because the Goldwing might be the first bike they ever had. Uh, so uh, then other people have other frames of reference and so they, they know there's problems. Um, um, the, some of the most common complaints about the Goldwing uh, as, it, as it's delivered from Honda are uh, uh, harshness in the fork, uh, bottoming over large bumps, you know, and the harshness comes from small bumps, uh, particularly while on the brakes, uh, while using the brakes or stopping. Um, the, the automatic preload adjuster on the shock doesn't have a full effective range, and the, the spring tends to uh, lack uh, sufficient rate to support um, uh, the load that people are going to put on it. So uh, the way the bike comes equipped, obviously uh, Honda tries to anticipate a broad range of people are going to ride it, but at the same time, uh, there's some big guys and, with some, and some big wives and there's some little skinny guys with, that don't ride with a wife and things are all different and it's really hard to set a bike up to suit everybody at all times. So <clears throat> that's kind of where a special, specialty company like ours comes in. We can tailor it specifically to exactly what you're going to do. Um, now in this case, uh, the, you know, we, we feel it our, what we do to tailor it, it also, you know, it's so far out that tailoring it is sort of... Uh, um, uh, an understatement of what, what we're going to do to upgrade it. A um, couple of look, just the quick short basics uh, of suspension. In, in a given suspension system, you're going to have a spring, uh, whether it's on the front of the bike or the back of the bike, and then some mechanism to, that creates damping force, some sort of resistance in both the compressing direction and the extending direction. And we call that compression and rebound. And so you're going to have some sort of damping force that helps control the energy that's put into the spring when it hits a bump. <coughs> now, uh, proper springs should support the weight of the motorcycle and the weight of the passengers and the weight of their load you know, that's on it. Um, so uh, springs are the best topic, that, you know, the most basic thing, and we're gonna, so I'll talk about that first. Um, as the bike's delivered from Honda, if you take your uh, bike off the center stand, uh, the bike uh, has 125 millimeters of travel, which is roughly five inches. When the bike rolls off the center stand, it drops three of the five inches that are available. It's just you know, gone. Um, in, in the bottom, to further aggravate this, in the bottom of one of the two forks is uh, what they call a, a, a bottom-out mechanism. That it, uh, It's a hydraulic bo bottom-out mechanism and without the fancy terms it's an oil bumper. It makes it so it's really hard for you, you really have to hit something really hard to feel a mechanical metal-to-metal -metal bottom. It's, but, so it sort of tricks you into thinking it's not bottomed out. That mechanism takes up the last inch of travel in the fork. So the five available, one of them is not really very effective at soaking bumps, and three of them are just gone because your bike is off the stand. And you haven't even got on it yet or put anything in it. So this is why almost any bump, almost anything you hit will, will, will put a small jolt into the bars. The bigger the bump, the bigger the jolt. If you have to go over a curb or you have a driveway with a curbing or anything like that, most people are going to roll up as slow as they possibly can and creep over it because they, you know, your, your first sign is bang. Well, some people just think that's the way it's supposed to be. Well, it, it actually doesn't, it isn't supposed to be that way and it doesn't have to be. You know, a proper suspension system, you should be able to soak a relatively large bump with very little input into your hands or into your butt or into your passenger's butt. And, uh, you know, uh, for sure with the Goldwing, we're trying to make two people comfortable most of the time, not just one. Um, so. Um, the springs, to, to put some numbers to it, um, just for reference, uh, uh, they're measured in metric uh, numbers and uh, in your Goldwing is a 0.7 kilogram per millimeter fork spring. 
uh, that similar spring rate uh, is comes on a on a Honda RS125, which is a little GP bike. You ever seen the guys race little GP bikes? That bike weighs 155 pounds with a full tank of gas. That's the same spring rate within a few ticks of what's in your gold wing, which is why it just collapses when you roll it off the stand. It, the springs are inadequate to support the bike. Um, the rear spring isn't as far off. Um, it, it, it's better. Uh, it's not great, but it's better. Um, one of the most common misconceptions and fears about moving to stiffer springs is stiff. When you say that, people immediately go, oh, stiff. That's, I don't want stiffer. It already feels stiff. What your illusion that you think is stiff is, is actually, or, or too much damping or, or too stiff, is actually that it's just riding so close to the bottom all the time that that input you feel is actually no suspension. So when you go to stiffer springs, relatively stiffer springs, we don't have to use as much preload on them. And preload is the initial pressure that's placed on the spring um, within the fork or on, on the shock. So you were able to put much stiffer springs, in fact, almost twice as stiff of fork springs into the bike. And yet, you know, if you push on the bike, it still moves freely, you know, in the top portion of the stroke. Um, you regain a little bit of stroke. We, uh, we in, when we do our whole cartridge kit, we try and internally compensate a little bit because we, we don't want to get it too high. Uh, the bike's already pretty tall. Even for an average person, it's kind of just about right. And we deal with a lot of people who are, you know, uh, you know, sh uh, shorter, five foot, if you're five foot six or something, most people are having a hard time, you know, they're looking for ways to get their wing lower to the ground so that they're safe, you know, while, while they're at the stoplights and, and whatever they got to do. So, um, <coughs> uh, proper springs require less preload, uh, so they'll be plush in the top portion of the stroke, but yet they'll have suffic suff sufficient spring pressure to support the bike when you go through dips, uh, when you hit big bumps that are going to jolt it, or when you're actually just carving flowing turns, you know, like, uh, you know, back country roads, you know, where you're just rolling and doing uh, ni nice, you know, fun, you know, more sporting t oriented uh, uh, riding. So uh, that, that, uh, that load that gets put into the bike, uh, what you need that spring pressure, the stronger springs, because you want, even though the bike's loaded, you want to still have effective suspension travel even under high load conditions. So as the goal wing is, if you're going to go try and, you know, do any fun country back roads with it, you're going it, to, it will ride so close to the ground. But many people have experienced a feeling of hitting bumps and having the bike actually skip over some. And, and that's actually because there's no suspension left. And when you're hitting the bumps, there's, there's literally nowhere for it to go except into the tire. Uh, or the tire is an integral part of your suspension system. And in the case of a stock gold wing, it's a lot of times all you got left is the tire. So um, tires take a beating. A little bit more about, quickly about springs. <clears throat> when you take your gold wing and wind the spring up to 25, now th this is, I want to demonstrate the difference between preload and spring rate to you. Um, uh, preload, like I was saying, is initial pressure on the spring. When you're changing that number, you're putting more or less initial pressure on the spring. You're not doing anything to change its rate. So all you're, what you're doing is making the bike truly initially stiffer. So uh, the Goldwing comes with a 900 pound per inch spring on it from the factory. And what that means is if we take that spring laying on a table and we mash it an inch, it's going to have 900 pounds of force. And if we mash it two, it'll have 1,800. So preload, though, is if we have a half an inch of preload on that spring, it'll have 450 pounds of force. If you run it up to 25 and you've got an inch, now you've got 900 pounds of force. But it's only, you're not changing the rate of the spring. So uh, what you're technically doing is making the bike stiffer in the, in the top portion of the travel, which is undesirable. That's where you want it to be plush while you're normally riding down the road. So preload is actually the enemy of plushness. So by going up on the spring rate, um, and a common spring rate we will use is about 1,200 pounds per inch. It's, you know, 30% higher. We don't have to put, you never have to put it up so high. So the bike will still feel plush. You can actually push on it and the seat will move with, with, with this setup on it. And, uh, but yet, if you can load it down, put your wife on it, hit your trailer to it, and it still rides plush. And, and so that's one of the, the big benefits of having a proper spring fitted to it. Um, uh, so one of the most 
basic things you can do, and, and it will be a huge bang for the buck, is to replace the springs on both ends of the bike. It's not a lot of money. Um, and the shock gets kind of a lot of money because uh, trying to get the shock in and out is a chore. You know, it takes a couple of guys working together a couple of hours to do the shock. It's, a, it's a, definitely a job. So it's a labor cost intensive job to get it off and, just, and change the spring. If, uh, uh, for people who aren't on super all out of high, high zoot budgets, I do recommend if you're going to take the shock out of the back, get an upgraded shock sort of like the one we market um, with a proper spring on it because the cost of the labor is so high. If you just put the spring on, now you've got a stronger spring and the shock's already not, not adequately damped to control it. It's over damped in some ways and under damped in others and I'll kind of explain some of that as we go specifically. Um, so let's, uh, we'll talk about your forks here for a minute. <coughs> um, two of these babies up front. Honda's done some strange things. Uh, uh, you have two completely different styles of forks on your bike. Um, the left fork is called a damper rod fork. And actually, I'm going to grab my display here, Ty. Um, here's our million dollar display. <coughs> Spent a lot of money on this and carved holes in it. So, But um, two completely different kinds of forks. Um, and one's called a damper rod fork, and the other's called a cartridge fork. A uh, damper rod fork is what's in your left fork. And in the bottom of it is a little gizmo kind of like this. This is called a damper rod. This has been around for 50 or 60 years. It's the absolute lowest grade, cheapest form of damping that can be sold, period, bar none. This probably costs a dollar. And um, it's basically just a tube with some holes in it. And oil gets forced through these holes. And uh, a hole, uh, it, it, that's what creates the, your compression damping force. Uh, the problem with holes are they only make one type of damping curve, and that's what we call progressive. When the oil's moving slowly through it, there's no damping. That's why the bike sort of has a loose feel, you know, in general over low, low grade, you know, low moving, low speed movements. But if you hit a bump, it tries to push a lot of oil through the hole, and it can't get the oil through, and that's where some harshness is generated. So the problem with holes is they're, they're very restricted. If you put thicker oil in it, <coughs> you'll get more of that low speed control, slow movement control, but it'll get worse over bumps. You put thinner oil in it, it'll soak bumps better, but then it'll just be absolutely like a broken, blown out shock. So um, in the case of this fork here, um, Honda's set it up so all the real damping occurs in the right fork, and this fork actually doesn't do anything. Uh, that in this, with this damper rod fork, it actually generates no compression and no rebound damping. This is mainly there to control the anti-dive system. Um, <coughs> the anti-dive is, um, Honda's trying to, what their goal is, is to control the bike diving when you apply the brakes. Um, uh, the truth is, in my mind, that's, that's a band-aid for a, a proper, properly functioning suspension system. If you had adequate spring rate and you had adequate damping control, you, you don't need some secondary mechanism to control the bike from diving. Um, uh, past that, <coughs> a certain amount of dive is actually good and desirable. Does, it does two things. When the bike, nose of the bike dips some, it helps it turn. The geometry of the bike changes as such, and it makes it more agile to steer. But beyond that, you're, you're dynamically loading the tire so that you get additional braking force. And uh, this is no different. Every single car in the world, if you drive your car and you mash the brake, the front end of the car dips. If that dips in a smooth, controlled fashion, that's what your bike should do. You want to take some of the weight that you have of the whole mass of the bike, and load it forward onto the front tire and push the tire down onto the ground. And that, makes, that make, gives you, su you know, superior braking performance. Um, uh, particularly stock on a heavy loaded Goldwing, if, if you really get a hold of the, particularly the front brake, you can make them slide. I mean, I've, I, I've done it. Because we, we want to simulate all the conditions that might happen. And particularly panic braking is, is where you're most concerned uh, about the safety of your Goldwing. Is if, if I have to stop right now, is, it gonna, is the bike going to stick? Is it going to hold? And that's, that's one of the things having some dive helps, right? So um, what Honda's done is there's a little gizmo <coughs> um, on the front of the fork. I'm just going to set this back down. I'm going to be putting this up and down, but that's all right. Uh, this, this is on your left fork. 
this unit here on the front is, is the anti-dive mechanism. There's, you know, all kinds of controversy on the chat list and everything about what to do with your anti-dive. And uh, some people think because Honda put it there, you shouldn't tamper with it. But uh, <coughs> we don't think it's, we don't like, <laughs> I don't like this part at all. Um, one of the greatest things you can do to your gold wing is disable this anti-dive and it'll immediately be better. Um, uh, the problem is anytime you pull the brakes or step on the brake, um, this, there's, uh, the brake system pushes a plunger in here. And that plunger blocks off the oil flow through those holes. And we can go in and you can put this fork with no spring in it like it's got right now. Push on that plunger and you can hang on it if it's full of oil. It won't move, it, it hydraulically locks the fork. It does have a, a heavy, really heavy gauge spring in it, so if you hit a sharp bump, it'll kind of blow off some. This is t absolutely 100% without unquestionably the reason that the, the gold wing is way more harsh on the brakes. Anytime you're stopping, and unfortunately it tends to be when you're pulling up to stoplights is where the pavement's worst, you know, as a general rule. So that's where all the, you know, the general harshness comes from is this, this mechanism here. Um, this is famous for malfunctioning on gold wings and sticking. So uh, uh, most warranties, they'll replace this part or <coughs> um, uh, you, dealers will, you know, they're, they're used to repairing this as it sticks. Um, the, uh, there are people that want to repair this and keep it working. You can buy the parts. Uh, again, now I've seen them out on the chat list. There's guys selling little kits to rebuild this thing. Um, as far as I'm concerned, disable, you know, like I said, disabling it. This, it's, it's basically free. You know, it's, it's a great upgrade to the bike, costs nothing. You, a couple of ways to do it. Some people space the plunger away. They get a couple little bit longer bolts and put some washers. Some people put a little metal ring under the, the hydraulic, the, the, the brake portion of it. And uh, some people just take it loose and cut the, there's a little plunger that pushes on it. They just chop that off so it never works again. And uh, any of those ways are fine. Um, obviously, the only one that's re irreversible is chopping the plunger off. But uh, for my, it was my bike, I would do that. You know, if I didn't have anything else, I would chop that plunger off because I don't want it ever mechanically interfering ever again. Um, so this, that alone frees the bike up so that it acts, acts, more, it's more compliant on the brakes and while you're trying to stop. Um, <clears throat> where Honda gets. The damping work done on the front end of the gold wing is in the right fork. Uh, <clears throat> in the right fork, there is a more modern style of fork uh, called a cartridge, a cartridge fork. The cartridge is basically a long, thin shock absorber. This is, this is our version of it, but it's kind of a long, thin shock absorber, and you'll see it, you know, that rod moves in and out as your suspension's moving up and down. There's the thin rod, and there's the main body of it. Um, this, this, since this